All right, guys, it is December 17th. Christmas is around the corner. Hopefully you guys are excited. I'm ready to end this year on a good note. And the snow has, especially if you live in the Jersey area and wherever, um, it has snowed significantly last night and it looks great. Uh, I'm a person that loves snow. So if you don't love snow, may the Lord bless you in other ways. But anyways, let's look at 2 Chronicles 34. We're looking at 14 to 33. Now, we're going to be reading a good chunk of text today. And so bear with me, and we will read from 14 to 33. And then um, just highlight some things that stood out to me personally. And hopefully it kind of inspires you for your own personal devotion time with God. It says in verse 14, While they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan. Then Shaphan took the book to the king and reported to him, Your officials are doing everything that has been committed to them. They have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the supervisors and workers. <laughs> Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it, read from it in the presence of the king. Verse 19. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Abdon, son of Micah, Shaphan the secretary, and Isaiah the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the remnant in Israel and Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because those who have gone before us have not kept the word of the Lord. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written in this book. Hilkiah and those the king has sent with him went to speak to the prophet Huldah, who was the wife of Shalom, son of Tokath, the son of Har Hasra, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the new quarter. She said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I'm going to bring disaster on this place and its people. All the curses written in the book that has been read in the presence of the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all that their hands have made. My anger will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says concerning the words you have heard. <laughs> because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people, and because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Now I'll gather you to your ancestors and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place and on those who live here. So they took her answer back to the king. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, and to obey the words of covenant written in this book. They had everyone in Jerusalem and Benjamin pledged themselves to it. The people of Jerusalem did this in accordance with the covenant of God, the God of their ancestors. Josiah removed all the detestable idols from all the territory belonging to Israelites, and he had all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God as long as he lived. They did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors. All right. That was a mouthful. That was long. But the first thing that stood out to me is actually coming from verse... Uh, where is it? Okay. Uh, sorry. It, it comes from verse 25. <laughs> It says, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all that their hands have made, my anger will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. What does that mean? God's mad. 
God's mad and he's going to pour out his judgment upon the land, upon the people who have forsaken him. And what's the scary part is that is it will not be quenched, meaning it's going to happen and there's going to be not an end to this in the sense that God, the severity of the judgment is severe. And I know that's like a just a repeat of what I just said, but the reality is why that shook me is that a lot of times when we think about the forgiveness of God, and there is the forgiveness of God, there's the kindness of God, there's the graciousness of God, but at the same time, what I feel like what we are tempted to do is we look at the graciousness of God and we kind of downplay the, the severity of sin. And sin is severe and it's crime against God and it's negative effects on people. And the word negative, don't downplay that, it's really severe because the wages of sin, according to Romans, is death. And so it's pretty severe, right? But I think oftentimes when we hear the gospel of grace, which it is the gospel of grace, what we should not do, but what we do is that we accept the grace, but we downplay, downplay the sin. And therefore, when we downplay sin, we cannot fully appreciate the grace given to us, meaning we'll never fully appreciate and see the value and the worth of the cross when we don't fully understand the depth and the destructive power of sin. If we look at every aspect of society now, it is down at its core and its deepest root. It is because of sin. Sin caused brokenness. And so when there's a breakdown in a relationship, when there's a breakdown in your body, when there's a breakdown in life, I'm not saying there's a direct immediate cause is because of sin, but the deep root, the, the genesis of all that has gone wrong since the Garden of Eden is because of sin. And so oftentimes what we don't realize is that there is a natural cause and reason for the things that go wrong in our lives. But at the same time, the deeper spiritual root that needs to be taken care of is sin. And the only solution to sin is not medicine, it's not uh, a program, it's not a system, it's not a regulation or reformation. The deepest cure for sin is Jesus Christ. It's what he did on the cross, dying for us, and we believing in that and submitting to that in the sense that Lord, that Jesus is not just simply a savior for us, but he's also a Lord, meaning we stop sinning and we follow in his footsteps we come to this place where we understand the the severity of when we do sin and when we do we have the grace but may the grace re real bring a realization that this is not something we should take lightly but seriously and so that was something that stood out to me first and josiah is oftentimes known as the person that helped bring this great great like revival in israel and in, in the in judah and jerusalem and what I realized, especially at the very end, is that up until the end, he becomes humble and repents. And God lists, God sees that, God hears that, and he honors that. But he still has to take care of sin. And so therefore, he still deals, God never, in a sense, excuses it and say, let's just forget about it. But that there's always a price to sin. And the only reason that we on this side of the cross, meaning Jesus Christ, may not fully experience the fullness of the fullness of sin, meaning death, is because of God's grace, Jesus Christ. But we fail to understand that the price of sin wasn't ignored, but it was paid. Not by us, but by God. And that's the thing, right? When someone buys the gift, the receiver of the gift will never fully experience the weight of the price of that gift. Why? Because it's given to them freely. But the one giving it bears the burden of the price to pay. And like, likewise, if the price of sin is death and Jesus Christ died for us, he knows the fullness of that price, whereas we may not fully know that. But we are called to appreciate that in the sense we appreciate Christ who paid it for us. Jesus paid it all, all for us. He paid, for, you know, he paid all the sins of all humanity for us and it's our choice to whether we want to receive that gift or not. 
And so what's interesting is that God here, he doesn't, even though Josiah was repentant, he says, I'm still going to bring down the judgment. And what's interesting is that he didn't forget, but he remembered and therefore judged. And when you look at the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, especially in the New Testament, we see that Jesus or God says, I'll forget your sins. Even though your, skin, your sins are, are scarlet, meaning as red as no, he says, I'll make you white as snow because of Jesus Christ. So does that mean that Jesus, that God forgets? Yes, he does. But more than forgetting, what God did is not just forget our sin, he forgave our sin, which then causes a forgetting of the sin. Meaning, it's not that he just, boom, memory gone, but that he doesn't hold it against us. He says, you know, forget about it. Don't worry about it. Water on the bridge. It's over. Not because of anything you did, but because of what my son did on your behalf. And therefore, what we have is God forgave us and in that process, forget our sins and doesn't count it against us. And that's kind of like the, the, the beauty of the gospel is that what, was, what we deserved, we don't get. And what is interesting is that the one last thing that stood out to me at the very end was Josiah knew that um, judgment was coming, but at least when he was reigning, at least when he was in charge, he says, as long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors, regardless of what the future held. As long as he was here, he made it a commitment to say, we're going to follow God. And that's the same commitment that you and I as Christians need to make that same commitment. It says, as long as I'm breathing, as long as I, I'm, whether I'm succeeding or failing, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to follow God. And as a leader, um, it was something that was rejuvenating for me, listening to that word, uh, for my own personal devotion time was that as long as I'm leading, as long as I'm given the privilege to steward a ministry, we're going to follow God. That, that's always going to be the pursuit. Will everyone do it? Maybe, maybe not. But at least in my leading and direction, we're always going to go in that direction. That we're always going to worship, we're always going to pursue, we're always going to love the Lord. And that same mentality is also not just for leaders, but for believers. That as believers, that regardless of anything that's going outside of us, or even internally in us, that we live wholeheartedly for the Lord. That we pursue Him. And that the only thing blocking us from His presence is actually ourselves. So therefore, just like Josiah, let, let us humble ourselves before God and pursue the greatest thing that we could ever pursue in our lives, which is God himself. And so, yeah, um, let's celebrate the gospel today. Let's just remind ourselves of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Um, let's not remind ourselves of every, only once a year or twice a year when there's a, a Christmas, the birth of Christ and Easter, the death and resurrection of Christ. But the gospel and the celebration of that gospel should be every day because we need that reminder every day because there's always gonna be something or many things that will distract us from that truth and that pursuit and desire. And so guys, let's celebrate and thank God for the gospel, for Jesus Christ, the sacrifice that he made that we should have, but he did. And so be blessed, stay warm as best you can, play in the snow if you want, but may you always be blessed.